We're back with another episode of Team Building with Jam, and today we're going to be featuring Obama Snow. I want to shout out Decent Guy for suggesting Obama Snow, longtime subscriber. Um, and he made some good points. He's like, he always thought of Obama Snow as a jam mon. And that, that makes sense because throughout the generations, I'm probably the only one who've actually used it in any, like, I actually intend to use it to win a game capacity and build teams around it, especially in Ubers back in the day, right? I'd use Obama Snow as a a Kyogre check so because it obviously would change the weather before primals right and it would change the weather and check it and leech seed and it was it was amazing so today we're going to be doing so now you may notice that you're already seeing the team completed so that's for those who may perhaps don't want to watch the entire team building with jam you know so just hit the like button and go <laughs> the team will be in the description so you can get um, right to using it but for those who want to uh, observe the process um, it's already been built and we're going to go through how we got to that point, right? Uh, I think this will be a lot clearer and it's quicker, right? Uh, without missing any of the points. So we're going to hop right into it. Obama Snow. So step number one of every team building, whenever you're going to team build, guys, remember step number one is define your objective. So in this case, my objective is to use Obama Snow. Now, much like I said in the previous team building with Jam, not because I want to use a Pokemon means that's the same thing as building around that Pokemon. So let's say that I wanted to have a, um, a uh, I wanted to use an Among Us. That doesn't mean the team is centered around Among Us. Among Us is not a sweeping kind of Pokemon. Typically, when you're going to build around a mine, it's usually because they take a lot of value from the opponent. So that's going to be your sweepers or heavy choice banders like Shampao. Um, very strong Pokemon that when they come in, they do a lot of damage. Right. And so that's usually or they're setting up with curse or something along that lines, that line. But it's intending to eventually sweep the opponent. So that's when you're typically going to build around. Now, if you just want to use a Pokemon in the case of Obama Snow, it's going to be something that supports another Pokemon. So Obama Snow, from its moveset wise, right, it has pretty even keeled stats. Nothing really stands out. Its attack stats and its um, special attacking stats are the same, right? They go up to 283 with the boost, I believe. It would be uh, like 309 or 311, right? And so that's not that great in comparison to what else we could use. And also it's, it's weak to seven types. So it's weak to fire, steel, bug, flying, fighting, poison, and rock. And it resists, I believe, water, water, grass, ground, water, grass, ground. That might be the only thing, right? I'm probably missing one, but that's that would be three resistances for the seven weaknesses, right? So that's not the greatest trade-off. Um, actually, might not be missing it. Is it just water, grass, ground? But yeah, if I miss one, so be it. Since this part grass, it has it's a combination of two types that have some of the greatest weaknesses. Right, I think maybe well, bug and ice may be the only worst one, or ice and bug and grass. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so they have a lot of weaknesses. So, Obama Snow is notorious for that, and so that's why most people don't use it. However, in Generation 9, uh, ice Pokemon received a buff in the sense that when snow's up, they actually get a 1.2 five defense boost so rock types get a 1.5 special special defense boost and ice size gets a 1.5 um, defense boost i'd like to know in your um the comment section now below do you think they should have kept the hail function where it actually does damage or are you happy with how it is with snow because you know hail could have been the sand equivalent you know how rain and sun mirror each other hail and sandstorm could have mirrored each other considering sandstorm uh still does chip right so hail would have been good to do chip um, but they changed it to snow for whatever reason even though ice is still mid right it says like why would you but hey uh, they changed it to snow but i'd like to hear your thoughts on that and so what are we going to do with this now for the support of obama snow, the, the, the the support okay obama snow is going to support the team and the question is how is it going to do so now it actually received a very cool move called Aurora Veil, which is the equivalent of doing getting a light screen up and reflect up at the same time. But it only works in snow, right? 
<coughs> so that's the downside. The snow's not up, you can't get it up. So if somebody switches in to another weather setter on the turn, you use Aurora Veil, it fails. You wasted a turn. So if they have Torco, be careful of using Aurora Veil because they may switch it in. And so Aurora Veil is amazing because that means some Pokemon on the field are going to be taking half the damage. Half. That's a big deal. Big deal. All right. So <laughs> apparently that's my new catchphrase, right? And so we're going to go with the uh, typical um, Obama Snow set. Blizzard is going to be the strongest ice move. You could rock Ice Beam if you want to be able to um, hit outside of um, the hail. But typically Blizzard is what it runs. And since we're not running heavy duty boost or anything like that, so we can extend that um, that light screen reflect effect, right? Bars, uh, and we're gonna have a lead sheet here, right? There are there are other options, you know. You could, um, I believe, you guess Earth Power now. I think you guess Earth Power now. Yeah, when it never used to get Earth Power. I think you got Earth Power last gen, so it actually could hit Heatran now, because um, it used to have to rely on Earthquake. But there are no Heatrans. If you look at the tier, uh, yeah, I mean, you could make a case for Earth Power. Um, as we mentioned, Torkoal just now can't come in for free Goldengo. Goldengo is actually... Hmm. Hmm. Skeledurge. You know, there, there might be a case for Earth Power. I actually forgot until this moment that it got Earth Power. But I'm so used to Leech Seed. However, you know, that, then you'd only bank on Giga Drain for, for recovery. Um, but since it's the support that it holds, Lee Seed is really good. Like, Lee Seed is a very annoying mod move, especially for um, late game situations. But there's there are certainly a case for Earth Power here. So, um, I'll put Leech Seed slash Earth Power so you guys can play around with that. Now, as far as the spread, we're gonna wait a bit. Um, and that's because we're gonna see how it's gonna support. Now, Obama Snow is there. We've determined step one our objective to use Obama Snow. Now, I'm gonna do this one slightly differently in that I'm gonna have it be balanced somewhat, as you saw. I actually have two versions of this team. It's not even the same team, it's just two different teams. But I'm only gonna do a team building for one, or I might do a quick scan over for the second one. Um, we'll see as I get there, depending on how long this takes. But we have identified the goal, we wanna use Obama Snow, right? Now, I've also had people request how to build balance. And so I actually decided to structure this more in a balanced way. Well, initially that was the plan. Uh, one version is far more balanced than the other. This one is still slightly like bulky offense-ish. Uh, because with balance, usually about half the team or you know, a majority of the team has a very sound defensive core, which could be three Pokemon that synergize with each other well defensively, have recovery moves or reliable means of recovery, typically, so that they can come in, take hits from the opposing Pokemon, recover it off if they need to, and do it repeatedly, right? And then the other half of your team would uh, be able to do the damage to defeat the opponent, right? And so uh, I'll show you a glimpse of that other team in a bit. But we're going to just uh, continue here. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to be using Obama Snow, in a, I guess I could use it offensively, but I don't think it's that. You know, I don't know. We'll see. Because you have to think about, okay, what is Obama Snow going to be checking in the tier, right, defensively? And it doesn't check too much, right? Rotom, but it doesn't need the split F to check Rotom. It can help with Grin. Um, most of what Grin can do can't harm Obama Snow. Uh, it can help switch into Don Dozo, but as I said, it's just mid, it's not amazing. So there's actually a case for this being offensive here, and you'll see. And so the next Pokemon I decided to throw on was Slowking, right? Because we they listed Fire Weakness, Steel Weakness, Bug Weakness, Flying Weakness, Fighting Weakness, Poison Weakness, Rock Weakness. And so there's a plethora of things we could have. We could have paired it with Toxapex with a Corviknight and a Garchomp with a... And so with your defensive course, typically what you want to do is check for the weaknesses of the Pokemon and then put supporting mines that cover its weakness. So Bombstone is weak to fire, Sloking helps with that. It's weak to steel, Sloking helps with that. It's weak to um, fighting, Sloking helps with that, right? 
And so Toxapex also could have helped with all those. In fact, Toxapex helps with more. Um, Toxapex helps with everything but flying and rock. Right? It resists all every other bomb snow weakness. And so you could try Pex there. I decided to go with Sloking here. One is just a little more interesting than Pex. Um, and I want, because I know you guys are going to be trying this team out. Remember, in the team building videos, this is just phase one. A team is never done. Uh, a team isn't done until you hit the field and actually use it, right? Because this is all theoretical right now. It's very difficult for the brain to assess the synergy of the things and the reality of what it's going to be like when you're actually executing the plays. And so this synergy might change it. Okay, Pex is better because we're running into this problem. Or this is better as the meta game is changing. So never get married to what you're putting on the team building. Um, the team putting in the team builder and that should allow actually more fun more flow into the process because you're not you're not so hung up on i need this to be perfect the first time right so you're like boom let me try this boom let me try this right and then you're not fearing the losses because you know winning and losing is good you win um you learn you lose you learn both you learn from truly uh, but obviously we're all here to prevail and so slow king uh, is going to be a little more defensive uh, but as you're gonna see in the way we're gonna likely make Obama snow more of an offensive mon I'm gonna put enough speed for what would be a relevant speed here say perhaps faster than King's Gambit King's Gambit likes to run more speed than uninvested Corviknight which hits um, 170 and so I think um, Since we're gonna be rocking earth power here. We want to be able to hit that because Obama Snow's offensive typing is actually not bad, right? It's actually quite annoying. Uh, so we can run, let's say, about 278. Most gambits are never going to go that high. And then put a ton in HP, right? And so at least we can have some offensive presence. What's interesting is the original team that I had was an offensive Obama Snow. And so that just shows how I'm learning in the process as well, right? When I thought about it, I looked through the thing. And it's always important to look through the tier as you're building. What that means is, let's say I'm like, okay, Obama Snow is weak to fire, and then I just theorize and gel the perfect core, right? Let's say I put Toxapex here, I'll, I'll, since I don't want to reset the, the sloking, I'll put it here. So then I put Toxapex here, and then Obama Snow plus Pex, then um, the only thing these two don't resist is rock and um, flying, right? And so let's say I put a steel type on here, like a gold angle or something, right? I put a gold angle. So gold angle covers my rock and flying weakness, right? Not because, pretend the sloking is in here. Not because these three technically cover all their weaknesses means that they have the good defensive synergy in practice. Why is that? So let's say that um, we're like a bomb of snow. If somebody has a fire move, then I can go to my talk specs. Well, what if it's a Garchomp? What if it's a Garchomp? Garchomp can kill your Obama Snow. Pex does not deal with it well. Gold Angle doesn't deal with it well. Right. So what if the Pokemon that's using the move destroys the other two? What if it's an offensive Great Tusk? Gold Angle doesn't deal with it well. Obama Snow. So you have to think about the reality of the Pokemon, not just the typing. Now, when you're in the builder, it's helpful if you if it's too overwhelming to go on to think about the typing. But what I do is I go, okay. Sloking is a pairing, right? It covers what? And I go, what in the tier uses fire moves often? Cinderace and Volk are the two, and, and the Iron Moth, or the heavy hitting fire types. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I want to make, make sure that I can handle those, right? Skeledurge as well, right? Um, and so Toxapex would be able to handle the first three Skeledurge, not so much. Actually, no, Toxic Skeledurge, what am I saying? So Toxapex would be a phenomenal partner. Again, you can swap out things for Pex and you'll see why I put Sloking here. You're probably like, oh yeah, the Chili Reception Jam, that makes sense. Well, actually no, that's actually not why I have it there. And it's funny, I didn't realize it until now. That would make sense, Chili Reception, you're expecting that. But that's actually an asset because your opponent likely is gonna be expecting Chili Reception. But since you don't have anything to really abuse that other than getting your Obama Snow another defense boost, which it already sets up the own snow itself, so you don't really need chili reception, right? And so we're actually going to be rocking a unique little nasty plot set, 
All right, we're gonna be here. See, I put the recovery move at the base. That's just how I do it. Put the setup move at the top. Um, so we're gonna be rocking nasty plot surf Terra Wa. Now, as far as the spread, I'm put psychic and psy shock here. Um, what are the, what's the difference, Jam? Uh, isn't it better to have psy shock so you can hit other boosters? Yes. So in a case where you're facing a quiver dance Volcarona, it's better to have psy shock. When you're facing a Hatterene. You probably can outboost Hatterene, and once you're terrestrialized, you'll be better. But if it terras, then it gets annoying. So in that case, it would be better to have Psy Shock versus Clodsire. It would be better to have Psy Shock, right? So there are cases for Psy Shock, and then the cases for Psychic, where if you're using Psychic, Dondoza isn't as reliable. It doesn't do a ton, but you know it can get split drops. It's not as reliable. Whereas if it's not, then it can obviously just curse up, and there's no shot. Um, Psychic also destroys Pex easier and Amoongus easier after plus two. Um, it also helps a bit more with Quake of Isle, though that's a little less common. Um, and so, depending on, again, this is where it comes down to the actual game. Depending on what we keep continually run into and what problems we, we, we encounter, you might go Psychic or Psy -Sar. For now, I'll put Psy -Shock. I think in most cases you prefer that. Uh, if you know he has a Pex or an Among Us, you just get the relevant damage on it or the hazards of required to knock it out, right? And so, the calc for this, because this, this actually took me so long to put together, because I have to build a team that you guys can quickly use, um, that's simple enough, even though you know, I haven't tested it yet, so it's all theory, uh, without using the same Pokemon over and over again. And so that's always a challenge with me doing team building videos. There is a Pokemon I could use here that's best, but I, I may have used that the team before, and so I'm trying to avoid repeating the teams. So it's going to be more and more creative as we try to push the boundaries of finding unique solutions, which is the, the fun of team building, right? And we're going to win our games. So Slowking is that guy we put in here, and so the next Pokemon I chose was. Um, What's this thing called? Iron Threads. Now, why is this? Initially, I was like, okay, well, I'd like, you know, Great Tusk, right? Great Tusk is better than Iron Threads in most cases, right? Um, just versus the tier. Uh, it's bulkier, it's, it's better typing, all these things. So I was like, okay, Great Tusk would work. However, one advantage Iron Threads has over Great Tusk is it's actually, I think, a more reliable spinner. Why is that? The things that come in on Great Tusk are Goldengo, Balloon Goldengo, and things of like that nature, Dragapult, Skeledurge, right? Well, not Skeledurge as much, but it's more Goldengo, like, truth be told, right? And so the upside for, of using Iron Threads is that it's, it's speed tier. One is very good, so Goldengo can't just come in and have its way. Um, it can't die to make it rain because it resists. And then lastly, Goldengo estate gets like because Goldengo likes to come in with balloons sometimes and keeps it tucked and then come in on Great Tusk on an earthquake or a rapid spin and then Great Tusk is slower and it's threatened whereas with Iron Threads can just stay in a knockoff or you can't to it KO it and then you got to think about do I give up my Goldengo or not and if Goldengo gets give up obviously given up that obviously opens up other Pokemon right and so I decided to give Iron Threads a try again two reasons spin reliably but also, I want to give new Pokemon a try. I don't want to have Great Tusk on every team, right? It's 50-something percent usage right now. Insane. It's on over 50% of every team, right? So we're going to be trying our Iron Threads now. Uh, we're going to be running a little bit of speed, right? So that we can outspeed um, Modest. Like, I guess Modest Gold Angle. I'm very unlikely to run into anyone that fast, but... Um, we're gonna pump the rest in the HP and, and spit out, right? <laughs> so I think it's <coughs> 243, which is not that great, but it'll do. We're gonna be rocking the leftovers. So why is this, right? So if you think about a defensive core, like, well, Jam, um, does Iron Threads cover the weakness, right? Like, you know, Slowking's weak to Dark and, um, Slowking's weak to Dark and, um, uh, Dark and, can't speak. Slowking is weak to dark and ghost and bug and such. And Iron Threads helps with the bug, but it doesn't help with the dark and such. Right, which is correct. 
Now you do want to factor in the terrestrialization. Sloking does like to terra water, which means it gets rid of his dark and ghost weakness and bug weaknesses often. So that's one factor. Uh, but secondly, and the team, the other team does a way better job at being balanced. Um, because Obama Snow is something that's somewhat dead weight, like when the mon that you're using is is sort of mid, I mean, if, if you want to put it as high as mid, right? And what that means is that most of the Pokemon in the tier, even if Obama Snow resists their types, they have something else to clap it. So let's, for example, use uh, an, uh, let's say an Azu. Obama's going to be able to switch in on a liquidation, right? Actually, with the defense boost, it'll do decently versus the player off as well. But it's just not a reliable Azumarill switching, right? It may be able to switch in on Garchomp's Earthquake, but gets bodied by Fire Blast. It may be able to switch in a Great Tusk Earthquake, but gets bodied by Close Combat, right? Um, Iron Thread, same thing. Well, not as much, but you get the idea. Um, maybe to switch in on Miascarada's Flower Trick, but gets bodied by the U-Turn. And so, these are the things we're describing. Like, it doesn't really wall anything. I think the closest thing you could argue that it could check is, from an offensive standpoint, is Greninja. Right? And so, because of that, it's somewhat playing the game with 5-6. But I have to use it because it's the mind that we're building a team around. We have to get the most out of it. So the question is, how do we do that? Is the best way to use it to like structure it into an actual defensive core where most of the time it's probably not going to do that much? I have a version that's like that and tries to achieve that. But in this one, we're going to go with the more bulky-ish offense so if you notice there are no hard walls per se other than maybe sloking you could make a case for but even then i'm nasty plot right uh, iron threads isn't the bulkiest thing in the world but it serves the purpose of okay i want rocks up and i want to stop pesky gold dangles and it you know it serves purpose for knocking off and things like that which is going to matter in a bit right and so with that being said you know, i decided to describe why i've picked um, um iron threads the question is, okay, what is the point of Aurora Veil? Aurora Veil is meant to support other things. I'm like, well, if we're going to take all the work of using Aurora Veil, we have to support something sinister, right? We have to support something that will abuse it and give, give the opponent hell because they're doing half the damage you're used to. So it's like, what Pokemon can we do that with? And I chose King Gambit, right? King Gambit's one of the bulkiest motherfuckers on the planet. And then you try to put dark to, and it's strong as shit and then you put the dark i mean the terrestrialization in there you don't know what it's going to tear into you're just in for a wrecking man and so one uh, one version of this has a roaring moon set and i'll actually go over that second version i'll wrap up this team builder faster and then go and, and kind of show you what i did with the second one and then you can decide right um so I'm trying to improve these to where I give as much value as possible, but not every team building video is an hour, right? So can you imagine if I was building these from scratch? It would take forever. Uh, but that's just the fun of building uh, some teams, right? So I decided to choose King Gambit. Um, but what, what item, Jam? What, what move set? How do you determine that? King's Gambit's likely going to... Uh, so when you're running a spread, you want to specifically know what you're doing it for. So let's say I decided I'm going to run whatever in between this, right? I have to have a reason, right? Because the, 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 the power, let's just use the power I'm taking it out of its attack and say putting it into defense or putting it into special defense, right? Or putting it into speed, that has to serve a particular purpose. Right. And it, your team has to support that if King Gambit is your primary damage dealer or one of your primary damage dealers. And so in my case, I want it to be as strong as possible off rip. Right. Why is that? Because I'm not intended to take any b bunch of hits. So the bulk isn't as important to me. What's important to me is that I kill things before they attack me. And so what Gambit has going for it is uh, one, it's just ability right with um, supreme overlord two it has its bulk three it has a boosting move known as sword dance and then it has this terrestrialization right we can do whatever we want for now we're going to keep terra dark 
Why is that? Because it actually makes Cloud Tau, and you'll see what the item that I'm pairing with, Cloud Tau Cleave and Sucker Punch. Insanely powerful. Insanely powerful. We're going to be rocking the Iron Head. And we're going to actually be rocking the Lumber. Now, why Lumber Jam? That's because oftentimes when the Gamster, especially when you don't know what his terror type is, is going and doing its thing, people like to status it. People like to go Rotom. People like to go Volcarona. It's like, okay, I got something for you. I'm going to status you, right? And so Lumberry allows for you to, on that turn that they say, I'm going to get you, you just kill them, right? Terra Dark allows you to still survive Volcarona's um, Fire Dance quite easily. I mean, you probably survive it without the Terra, um, but it allows you to survive easily. We put the rest in HP. Look at that HP, man. Look at that HP. Wonderful. And the speed is for Corviknight, right? Um, it's a little much. But I don't think the extra bulk will make that big of a difference. Um, and it also allows you to speed outspeed other King Gambits that are speed creeping um, Corviknight. So, it's going to be Terra Dark for the utmost of power, right? Because when we're buying those screens, we want to just chop people. Kowtow, Iron Head, Sucker Punch. Um, and another beautiful thing and that you're going to notice with the Iron Threads pairing is that Iron Threads baits in Great Tusk often. Right? And because of that, it's very likely you're going to be able to remove its item, which is going to support King's Gambit later. And because most Great Tusks don't run um, fighting moves, if you're terrestrialized and you're, um, and you're behind Light Clay, Great Tusk is doing nothing and it actually loses to Gambit, right? And so uh, you could also play around with Terra Fairy. Right? Terra Fairy behind the light screen is great. I'll test it out and see if I'm using the Terra Dark enough. Um, otherwise, you could use Terra Fairy, right? Then you're only weak to Steel and um, Steel and uh, and Poison, right? Both of which King Gambit naturally would wall. So you could time your Terra that way. Um, and most of the things that want to come in on Gambit to revenge kill it. When you Terra Fairy with Fighting Moves, Terra Fairy with Ground Moves. Um, again, especially behind those screens, it's no joke. Uh, you could also opt for Terra Flying. I mentioned Fairy because... Um, one, you're going to be be beating Tusk with Fairy anyway, especially behind the screens. I keep emphasizing. Uh, but it also doesn't allow you to be Xi'an Pao Ice Shard Fodder, right? Because then it can get a little dicey versus Xi'an Pao. Now, when Xi'an Pao gets banned, there'll be no Ice type that um, can do enough damage. So then at that point, you could make a case for Terra, um, Terra Flying. But even then, uh, with Rotom coming in, you have to predict between Willow Wisp and Volt Switch. If you kowtow and he volts, which is you're losing way more health because you're weak to. And if you sucker punch any will o wisp, obviously you don't want that. So, um, several terra types can work here. But that's just um, dark we're going to go for now for the power, right? Real tested. So, everything is theoretical. So, there's no pressure. Uh, the next mon, I believe, was. I actually don't remember what other mon. I remember Rotom was one of them. Because um, if I was looking at this now, I was like, okay, well, uh, did I have Golden I don't think I had Goldie on that one. Actually, yeah, I did have Golden on this one. All right, yep. So I have a Golden Go here, and they're, they're, they're the only reason, bros. So let's get it. Let's just let's, let's, let's keep you the buck. Let's keep keep you the buck, man. It's for that damn Garganical, right? You never. Why do I always use Covert Golden though? Uh, Golden Go. Why do people use Covert Golden Go? Why is it? Second most used Pokemon in this year. For a lot of reasons. However, with when you're structuring a team, you're like, man, I don't want a cover. I don't like losing games to pure matchup. Right? Meaning because of my stubborn ass trying to be cute <laughs> and don't put a covert on a mod. Any half decent player with a garg. And I'm gonna be making a video on how to use Garganic. So things are gonna get worse. My apologies. Hit the like button. <laughs> but nah. Uh, <laughs> that was very funny. Um, so yeah. So we, we're we using Covert Cloak. One, it helps with just a lot of different things because of its typing. Right? Primarily like other bulky mods. Right? The, t the, the ability is so critical. Right? It's, it shuts down Spores. Shuts down Loon with its typing. Unless it's Bulldoze. But... You don't even get the speed drop, which Bloom likes. 
Um, you can plot and break through Pex, Tusk, Rotom, things of that nature. Uh, it's just a phenomenal mod, but primarily it resists the cure with ease. And it doesn't take a ton of damage for rocks. Rocks is one of the easiest things to get up in the game. So you want to assume it. And so other Covert Cloak users, another solid one is Amoongus, but we already have Obama Snow. Um, we could put Amoongus on there if it made sense, but um, I don't think it would support things enough to justify Amoongus and Obama Snow being together. Right, so that's another solid Covert user. Um, you want your Covert user to be able to come in, take Pex is another common Covert user. Right, we could have went um, Pex Perrin and then Covert, which would open up these slots a lot more. Again, so many options, uh, configurations. Perhaps I'll build another version after I realize, oh, you know, actually Pex is better. I want to Covert Pex and open this up. Right. But we're going to Covert it. It's going to be our typical Gold Angle spread. Um, again, it's the spread is just what it is. Right. It's it's more about the speed for me. Right. So I want to be able to kill you before you kill me, right? A lot of people will go, oh, I want some defense for this and that. That's fine. Uh, I haven't run the calcs enough on this to know what this even is guarding against, right? You can just put it all in HP and have enough special attack uh, to do a rele rele relevant Pokemon, right? But the speed is key. And I want to be able to never always be faster than um, um, Breloom for one, right? And that's a relevant calc. Um, Especially with Gambit, right? You want to clap that thing early. That's another beauty of uh, a couple of these mods. Especially a bomb snow when it gets the defense boost, right? If Loon tries to spore and you snow, can't knock you out with Mach Punch. CC for sure, but not Mach Punch. Uh, we'll get to Terra types in a bit other than Sloking and um, Gambit. And so it's going to be typical Goldie, nasty plot. But as again, Garganical from a matchup standpoint. Guys, trust me. Trust me, right? Because I'm not building this team to just be able to beat a low ladder player or something like that. I want to make sure that I have a fighting chance no matter what the matchup. And so if I'm, if the way this team is structured, I would get ramsacked by a Garganical. Now, if it's Terra Water Garg, it still can do some a lot of work to me, but at the very least, I have my, um, my Abomin Snow and uh, Slow King to plot, though. Slow King isn't as reliable. Uh, since it's not psychic, so that's something that you have to be wary of, uh, for sure. Curse guard, but if that became a big enough problem, then we just alter around the team to, to to account for curse guard, right? Especially if you're running covert picks, uh, though picks would still lose to guard because you just earthquake spam. But we'd have additional mons to help with the the uh, the curse water guard. It's just a matter of how common it's become. I don't know. And so finally, we're gonna be packing on the Rotominator, right? And this one I put on <coughs> one, no ground is immunity. Bomb is no resist, but we just discussed. Great Tusk Earthquakes, what is it gonna do next? Clobber you. Guard Chomp, what's gonna do next? Fire Blaster. Um, you know, that applies for everything. And we have three mods weak to ground, right? And so, uh, Rotom one is just annoying as shit. So most importantly, it allows for my viewers who are just looking for a fun time um, or don't know how to game plan, how to structure a game, all these things. It allows them to have a simplistic sort of method, right? I can volt switch. I can volt switch and figure it out as I go, right? Obviously, that's not the ideal way to play at the highest levels, but you got to start somewhere. So if that's where you are right now, celebrate that shit, right? Use the resources that we provide for you on the channel and get better as you go and you'll eventually be able to do everything you see me do right, you just gotta put in the practice there are no secrets um, all of the information you need is, is in commonplace it's, all of it is on the channel now, I'm not talking about having to go through 3,000 videos it's literally on playlists there are only like three playlists or maybe three or four playlists one for mindset which is really the most important one second one is skill set one is just the lives. I think I don't remember what the other one is. I think it's the team building videos, right? So every skill set you need: team building, mindset, and, and skill set. And then you just watch the lives to learn how to do that. So everything you need, I want y'all to succeed, right? Bars again. Everything you need has been structured, and I have the community. A better one's coming. Not like better than the academy, but 
a different platform so that you guys can be supported even further. So it's, there's just no excuses, man. Everything you need is here. Uh, we sign up on the ladder and grab again. Right. And so Rotom's primary purpose, again, is to... Because if you think about the things Rotom baits in, right? Rotom baits in Among Us. Rotom baits in Goldengo. Depending on what the Cloud Sire said, it might bait that in. Um, Rotom baits in things like Roaring Moon and Opposing Rotom. Right? And so all those mons get bodied by the snow or get bodied by the Goldengo or get bodied by um, the Gambit. Right? And so that's where we're working with now. Now I've thought about several different configurations of different things, but if we're but since the bomb snow is mandatory, I have to have something that abuses the hail, or else it's just kind of there, right? It has something has to abuse the aurora veil. Now, Shampao could have been an option. Right? We could have went Shampao or Gambit. The thing is, Shampao. I guess technically you could say it benefits from the hail plus the aurora veil, right? But Shampao is not meant to take damage anyway. Right, you're not letting that thing get hit. So Gambit is one of those mines that can afford to take damage and destroy you at the same damn time. Right, and so um, I have a Gambit version. I'm about to show you the, um, the, the the Roaring Moon version, which is a lot closer to balance. So this is more bulky offense, as I said. Um, Gold Angle does not have Shadow Ball. Let's see. But uh, this spread, you know, the speed is for Among Us, not Among Us, for Azumarill. So there was a one game I, I lost a game because Azumarill was faster than me and it liquidationed me after belly drumming. Whereas this guarantees that it can only Aqua Jet you if it belly drums. Because right? if he runs Jolly and he belly drums and Aqua Jets you, you're done in this town. Right? You're swept. So, uh, actually, Baba probably lives one, but if he's Jolly, he outspeeds you and just kills you anyway. So, um, that's for that situation. And the extra defense isn't that relevant. Now, as far as Terra types. We're going to always be ghosts so that if you run into Facade Dragonite, you live. We're going to be flying, right? So that Great Tusk, one of the most common matchups for Gold Angle, as well as Iron Threads, as well as Claude Sire, cannot do much damage to you, all right, if, if anything. And so Dark, we've already explained. Um, we're going to put Water for now. All right, there are a lot of Terrors we could do. But uh, I'm putting Water... Just really as a placeholder, uh, somebody else passed me a team with this, with uh, Iron Threads, and he had Terra Water. Um, but I usually, when in cases like these, kind of test the team out <coughs> first and see what Terra type would make sense based on what we're lacking. Because Terra is like, I always joke and say, Terra is like a seventh Pokemon, right? It's this. It's almost a secondary thing to consider. It makes the Pokemon almost a different mind. Garganical being a fairy type is a different Pokemon. That is a fairy type that resists ghosts. And has all the benefits of the fairy. Like, you know, so it's, it's almost a seventh mind that you can activate at whatever point. So similarly, you know, that's, that's we say we coined it here, guys. Terrestrialization is a seventh Pokemon. You have to use your seven Pokemon wisely. Uh, Terra Water Sloking is typically best. Now, as far as the Sloking spread, I'm on. I'm a little on the fence about it. Right? I'm not 100%. I'd have to run up a ton of calcs to know. But for now, the only relevant thing is speed. One outspeed Toxic. One outspeed Hatterene. One outspeed all of them. Mungus. Everybody. Right. And so that's relevant with Nasty Plot. Um, I'm gonna run a. Tubna defense, I think that's probably relevant for something and some spadef. I'll have to run a lot of cows based on what I see I'm encountering and whether I need not I need that much defense or I need more spadef. You know, uh, do I need more spadef to take on a spathra? Also, a case is calm mind. Calm mind allows you like calm mind shock means you always beat a spathra no matter what the, the typing is because you're boosting your spadef as well, so you're negating its damage and then you can. Obviously, Surf or Psy Shock. So, if you're fucking sick of Espathra, um, pack Calm Mind. It also helps you defeat Volcarona if you're Calm Mind. Um, it just means that, you know, things like Toxic Amoongus and Toxic Pex, you don't murk them as instantaneously, right? As Nasty Plot. But Calm Mind is certainly an option. Uh, it also helps you defeat Goldengo because as it's Nasty Plot and you're Calm Minding, there's no hope for it. Um, it helps you beat Hatterene. 
So in, in, with a calm mindset, you could actually stick to psychic because Hatterene can't do anything to you. Um, its draining kisses aren't going to be doing nearly as much as your surfs are going to be doing, um, especially if you're terra watered, right? So uh, calm mind is is also an option. Just throwing that out there, and then you could obviously run a lot more defense. Uh, so many options. I'm excited to try them all. That's what the fun of it is, right? As we uncover and discover things together. So that's going to be the spread. The Obama Snow spread enough speed. If you notice, speed is a key thing, right? It's attacking before the opponent, right? I think a lot of players often lean too much into taking hits when a lot of the situations you're in, you wouldn't even needed. You wouldn't have needed to take the hit if you just ran the speed, right? So. I, I lean more to killing people, not killing people, oh my god, YouTube's about to demonetize me, knocking Pokemon out, shout out to PokeMMD, first, before I'm worried about whether I can take a hit, unless it's something very defensive that I know there's no hope for worrying about speed, like a Ferrothorn or something, right, shout out to Ferrothorn when he returns, what if they took Ferrothorn out, like, that would be stupid as hell, like, just permanently, that's dumb, but, uh, like for what they did with Grin last gen and Ferrothorn never that's stupid. So yeah, it's gonna be called Snow and I already have the team. So we're gonna get into the second one. This will be a lot quicker now. Ryder went over the Obama Snow. Now because of what I just learned, the Obama Snow set would be changed to the offensive here. And it would pack Earth Power. Now the Slow King, same set, right? Uh, it would be slightly different, a little more spadef. Now to notice the thing here we have Garganical. Why is that? Well, based on the core we have here, you know, Dark and Psychic could be problematic. And so Garganical Fairy covers for both of those typings, as well as providing Stealth Rock support and um, Salt Cure, right? If you notice all of our quote unquote walls in the defensive core, both have recovery, both are bulky, but both have an offensive aspect to them. Nobody's really a sitting duck in the way Toxapex is. And I wanted to design the team like that, right? And so, uh, Sloking is a booster, Obama Snow is throwing out damage, and Garganical, that Salt Cure is no joke, boys. And so we know this. And this is going to be critical, how these three are structured for the Roaring Moons that you're about to witness. And I'm actually going to show, show you guys that last. But Garganical um, actually covers everybody's weakness. It covers the Dark, Ghost, Flying, um... I think with these three, technically they resist every type. Not to say that would be relevant, because I'm talking about Garg being fairy and rock at the same time, right? You choose, pick and choose, because obviously they don't resist bug, but when Garg Terra fairies, they do. Um, but I think, I think every type is resisted. Remember, because of Garg's ability, um, but it's not really about resistance as well as just resist, resist. Um, there's more to it than that, but that's just a uh, point. Well, fairy's not resisted. I'm wrong. Fairy's not resisted. Uh, so that'll be maybe the only type, which is impressive, right? Very impressive. So, uh, here we go. Actually, fairy not being resisted is a, it's a relevant thing I just noticed. It's a very relevant non-resistance. Um, even that the team structure as a whole. Though sloking, most fairies are special. So Slow King would be able to guard against them and whatnot, but since we're nasty plot, it's not as reliable as usual. But yeah, I mean the fairies are valiant and, and um, valiant and um, and uh, Hatterene, right? So they're not that threatening, where we couldn't get around it at least. So that now, Great Tusk is here because we needed some form of hazard control. But I must know. Um, this is heavy duty boost, but you don't want to go into particularly this generation just recklessly not having any form of hazard control. Now, I considered Hatterene, I've considered a several several things, right? Um, but a combination of having a ground type hazard controller and something that similarly to Slowking can um, disrupt and potentially sweep. And this is key knockoff, and you're going to understand why when you see the men set. Knockoff is key here, right? We could have tried Iron Threads again. Um, that's certainly something to consider, right? But this version is a lot more Gambit susceptible. Like the other one is somewhat, but it has it, it has some some solutions, right? It's, it's not it's not just straight up a loss to Gambit. Um, whereas if I had Iron Threads here, I think 
that may, particularly if they're alum like the one I just showed you, that would be a very dangerous situation for us. So um, we're going to be rocking Tusk here. It covers for a lot of other things as well. And there were several co configurations we could have done. Um, but I wanted Roaring Moon, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted Roaring Moon because we wanted another Pokemon, much like Gambit, that really benefits from the hill. Or the, the snow, rather, and the veil, right? What really pre appreciates being able to set up with taking half the damage it's usually taking? Roaring Moon. Alright, Road. So the knockoff's critical for what's going to be Dondozo. Right? Right, because um, I actually didn't go through the steps very well in this game live. So you're going to have to forgive me. Step one was identify the goal. Step two was supposed to check what Pokemon and strategies stop you from your goal. And then I, step three is identify what Pokemon save you from that problem. So I, I actually didn't do a great job of that. My apologies. We'll do better in the next one. It'll be 45 minutes in right now. Um, and we can't go through that right now. Uh, I've been building this shit for like two and a half hours, so my brain's a bit fried, forgive me. So, Tusk here, um, Rotom's critical as well for, again, when the men set is seen. So these two remove items and spread um, spread <coughs> status. <coughs> you think about, okay, what does Rotom bait and baits in? As we said, it's potential Godzire, so now that's getting burnt. It baits in potential Rotom, that's getting burnt. It baits in um, potential... Um, Sometimes pulp, but you get the idea. Uh, Base in potential Toxapex a lot, that gets burnt, right? And why is that relevant? Well, or, and why is knocking Dondozo's item relevant? Why is knocking off Rotom's item relevant? Why is knocking off opposing Great Tusk's item relevant? Because uh, those are going to be your typical switches, right? Why Why is that relevant? Well, we're rocking a, a great, a, a very interesting Roaring Moon set that was passed to me by a guy named Kev. Well, at least that was his uh, name. And... I didn't end up using the team because Greninja came out the day, but I was planning to use it for a live. But he had this very interesting Jawlock team, and I think he got to either number one or like Super High 2000s with it. He's like, yeah, the set jam pretty much sweeps the tier, such and such and such. And so I have not used this yet. That's why I didn't put this as the first team. But have you noticed it's way more balanced defensive core here, somewhat of an offensive core? Uh, somewhat, right? It's not black and white. Rotom being fully defensive, Great Tusk being fully defensive. Um, you could go for something more offensive. It's like, okay, I'm gonna my means of hazard control is Cinderace, which I could have done, but the problem with that is Cinderace could court change the screens back to his side. The screens to his side, because court change changes the court. So if I set up the screens and they set up hazards and I want them gone, I actually might give them screens. So I was like, hmm. I don't know if that's a great combination. It's in the race plus screens. So I just said, uh, yeah, we'll just go the traditional Tusk route. Now, this is by no means the perfect configuration. We're very likely gonna change things around as we put things in practice, but let's ride the wave and put some things on the board and get the party started, right? So Tusk, Rotom, support this damn thing. I heard, I heard, okay, it's supposed to be Terra Bug, my apologies. I heard this guy sets up and destroys lives. Sets up on Tusk because it's so bulky. It has a ton of defense. Right? It taunts Tusk so it can't bulk up. And then it's just Dragon Dancing up. right? And because Tusk might try to rapid spin to boost its speed, Dragon Dance boosting its speed too. Tusk tries to get out of it. You taunt it again. And Jaw Lock prevents you from switching and from the opponent from switching. So eventually you get plus six on the Tusk and just crunch equivalent through the opponent's team. Right, and the Terra Bug allows for you to take on the Tusk Earthquake knockoff, Body Press, CC, whatever it's going for. Um, and then after the fact, Bug is such a neutral type to most priority that um, because you have so much defense and you're probably going to have some hazards up rocks, it's the only thing. But you also might have weakened things with knockoff in case of Dondozo. You might have knocked, uh, knocked off... Um, might have burnt some Rotoms. You know, the relevant damage you need to sweep with Crunch has been put in place. Uh, and Garganical, we're Covert Cloak, so Garganical can't stop here. So that's set up fodder too. All right, so I'm heard the set is lethal, but it's a, an I heard, right? I haven't used it yet. So we're going to be using both these teams um, as we get the party started for the new series. So um, as I said, I'm going to name the Pokemon suggested after the person. 
decent guy here. Um, and usually I do this on stream, but since nobody else suggested anything, uh, I, I actually prefer to name all of the mods after you guys. So if what there are five mods left on this squad, and there are five mods because decent guy gets the um, decent guy gets the, the Obama Snow on both teams, obviously. Right? Did I name it on? I keep clicking the same team on that. Yeah. So I'm like, why is it coming up? But uh, he gets the Obama Snow, right? And again, when I do stream team team builders, which is coming soon, I used to name whoever suggested the mod after who. But if you guys want any of these mods names, uh, just let me know if there yeah, I've two slow kings per team and two rotoms so um, each person can get a different one so when I do the live but if you want it first come first serve whoever says gold and go first I want to jam I'll just put your name there um, as we get the live started but uh yeah we went through two damn teams again I know this one was sort of like rapid fire I'm trying to keep these not as long as they are but it's dope things to have in the background and um, you get a lot of value from it gonna be rough to put this into sections though but we'll make it happen so uh thanks for watching um let me know what i can improve on what you guys appreciate um i can already think of some things that i messed up on but again we're getting it done uh so we're gonna be using these teams tomorrow at least one and we're gonna be starting from the bottom all the way to number one so yeah hit the like button so other people can discover this guys please you guys have been killing it i appreciate y'all more than words can explain. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.